A lot of you have been asking for our room tour and we finally find some time today to get that done and clean up the... Oh, I mean, no, it's always this clean. <laughs> it's always this neat. Um, of course. We didn't have to clean this up, no. Um, so, of course, you guys are going to be most interested in the display area right here, which is actually just three Billy, I, uh, Ikea Billy cabinets, bookcases, um, that we replaced the shelves that it comes with, with glass shelves. And then we added in our, we, we put in the LEDs in the back. So let me turn those on and then I'll bitch about it. So that one, that one, and this one. They're on remotes, by the way, so that's why, that's why I'm doing this. So the, these LEDs are really nice because there's a lot of them, so you don't see the individual LEDs in there. The only problem with this is we link them all together and I thought, you know, they should be at the same frequency. The only problem is apparently they are not. So you, can guys, you guys can probably see it now in camera that there is some flickering going on and actually all three cabinet lights <laughs> flicker at different amounts. So even though the camera can kind of do that variable frame rate thing to get rid of some of that flickering, I can't get rid of all three. So that is why in, our, um, in the reviews, you'll only see me turn on the middle one because I can get rid of the flickering on one of them. And that actually adds a little bit of uh, hair light or separation of me from the back. So the other two I usually leave off. Um, but I mean, it looks nice. Uh, and yeah. they're really supposedly really good color quality LEDs. Though they, they weren't cheap. They different colors too, right? Uh, this, we can do either, I'll change it on this one. Like 2700 Kelvin, we can do 3200. 4,000 and then 5,000, 5,500 and the really blue 6,500. I typically leave it on 4,000 or 5,000. 4,000 I think looks Yeah, and then good. you can make it brighter as well. Yeah, this is almost at the lowest. If I jack it up, it, it goes really bright. It, Ooh. That's way too much. <laughs> so let me turn it back down. Well, if you're not filming, this is really good for just display case. Anyways, so let's go on to the display cases. Let me open it up so it's easier to see. The first one, oh, by the way, these glass doors from Ikea, they don't sell them anymore, at least not in Canada. Well, they have a different version, right? I no, hope. they no, do not. They don't, no? What? No. no, they have a different version with the door handle. It's different. So this first case was supposed to be all Rita's figures and Homer's supposed figures. Supposed to be. Um, but apparently, as you can see, uh, that's not uh, quite okay. true anymore. We've got some right hand ones up there. We've got a right hand one up there and a Homer one and then some random one over there. That's a Rocket Boy figure, I think. Um, we've got two right hand ones and then we've also got Bountiful Year over there. Sorry, two right hand ones over here. Yeah, two right hand ones over here and then the Bountiful Year over there. Now, the reason why she's there they're both there is because I don't trust the how heavy they are on these glass shelves. They're a little bit, I don't know, I don't trust it either. I don't want things breaking and just having a, yeah, that would be terrible. So they, especially since the, they're a pair, they're super heavy with the base and, and everything. Yeah, so the billy, only the middle is the, uh, the board, right? Yeah, the billy is actually not that deep, so this barely fits. Yeah, it jammed all the way in the back. And it's still sticking out a bit, right? It's still sticking out a bit, but because the door and the shelf has a little bit of space, it's just using up that space. Yeah. Perfect fit. And as you guys can see, there's crap in the bottom because it doesn't get seen much. I've been <laughs> randomly, Susie's been randomly putting stuff in there as well. Well, adding some interest to All your collection. All of that stuff you put no, in there. No, it's not mine. That's your Gundam heads. The Gundam heads are, the front ones are not mine. Well, I got a yam. It's just a yam. <laughs> so I will clean this up in the uh, in the future because I do need the space to put some of the figures in there. But yeah, I mean, that's a prop, by the way. That's a nice prop. It's just a carpet, furry carpet, also from IKEA, by the way. So let's move on to the middle one. Let me. This one is what was supposed to be all Mataro figures. Um, that's <laughs> kind of. No, no, not quite true anymore. At least this line is all Mataro figures, this row. Um, but the top is kind of random right now. What happened? Uh, where's Ram? I, I don't know where Ram is. I don't know where she's gonna. Oh, well, I mean, she must be in box somewhere. 
And then their store again got taken over by two massive quarter scale figures because they're heavy and I don't want to take a chance on the glass shelves. Uh, but we got Mizuki and Queen Bee Honey and then Mataro. And then sadly to say, I mean, this, this display case I've been using as my lazy cabinet as well. So stuff that I've unboxed and haven't reviewed yet or need to be reviewed or I'm working on a review, they've been put in here as well. And sometimes I forget to take them out. So you'll see some other random figures down here as well. So you guys probably saw a bunch of figures in this display case, especially that we haven't unboxed or reviewed. So if there's anything that you guys really want us to, to review first or unbox first, um, get the videos up for you guys, let us know and we'll try and get to those first as quickly as we can. Okay, so let's move on to the last cabinet. I've opened them up and this one is the most on brand. I mean, sorry, on theme. This one is supposed to be all <laughs> Odin on figures. Um, hey, the top row is all Odin on figures. Sorry, I the, was still at the bottom. Top. The top row is all Odin on figures. Oh, that's true. We got four now. And then the middle row is half, so that's not too bad either. Um, the other two are the Sakiyama figures that were released recently. I mean, I know I haven't reviewed Mio as of now, uh, but we'll get to her for sure. And then if we move down a little bit, that's mostly Odin on as well. We've got a random... Mataro figure in the middle. She needed to sit down on something. That was, I had the clear acrylic thing, so that's where she sat. That's true. She could be sitting with Ren. No, but I would need to move the whole thing up there. Nah. <laughs> Too much work. Laziness. And then the last two, again, more what are these? random stuff. I don't know. What oh. is the cat doing? The cat's just sitting oh, there. Oh, that's a sofa for the cat. Yes. Why is he sitting on the bed now? Because you put him there. <laughs> yeah, nothing much down there. Some of the some of the props we have are down there. So. Yep. so moving a little bit more to the right, you guys probably saw this from the far away shot. A bunch of a bunch of figure boxes here, as well as some here. Actually, this is only a small portion of it because these are gonna be the ones that are um, need to be reviewed or in the process of being reviewed. So the, the figures should be in the display case. Actually, there's one or two in here that haven't been unboxed. I can see it already. This is only a small portion of the figures. Actually, there's three here that's not been reviewed yet or unboxed yet. Um, so this is only a small portion of the boxes and Susie's already bitching about running out of room. So actually talking about that, I'm going to have a Google Sheets uh, link down below of all the figures I'm going to be selling because I just have too many. I don't have enough room. If you're interested in them, email me and you know, we'll, we'll work out something. Yeah. This is what I'd say 20% of the boxes. If, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I lost count. Like, yeah, I have a you have piles of boxes in the basement. Well, the boxes are so big. The figures like this small and the box is like triple yeah, the size. And that's true. And then you can't get rid of the box because how are you going to transport anything? Yeah. No <laughs> Anyways, you, this is a, another IKEA product. The IKEA, what is it? Nordly. 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 Okay. I like it because it has a soft close. But basically, this is where I store a lot of the camera equipment. So I'll just quickly go through that. Got some lenses here. Uh, got some miscellaneous lighting stuff here. Um, microphones, batteries are here. We got some tripods in the back. Nothing, nothing crazy. Oh, got stickers to censor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the box of stickers we use to censor. Ah. That's the it's all sorts useful of little stuff. Stick stickers to censor the figures when we need to. <laughs> okay, second one is more camera equipment. We've got the two tube lights. This is also from Godox, I believe. Yes, Godox tube lights. Um, they've been working well. The, the, the RGB, full RGB lights. We got some chargers, some light modifiers, some microphones and dead cats, and then some random miscellaneous chargers and more light modifiers. What is this? Oh, oh batteries. The fake batteries. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the, the ones where you can use, um, instead of using batteries for the camera, you can just plug it into mains power. And then the last one is 
a light modifier again. This is the aperture barn door. So it's just barn doors, literally, that we can put onto the lights that we'll discuss later. Um, but yeah, this one is a relatively new thing we got, but it's, it's been pretty useful so far to get that really harsher looking light, that directional light. So this thing is actually the turntable that I use. This thing was a great purchase. It wasn't cheap. I think it was like 100 something bucks Canadian ended up. I got from AliExpress or yes, yes, AliExpress. But this thing's been working really well and it hasn't had any issue so far with the weight. So that's good. And then this side is actually all of Shuzi's art stuff. So I'm not going to bother opening that. Okay. Uh, oh, hmm. the more astute of you can probably tell which figure all these little bits are from. Um, <laughs> when I see this, I remember what's going wrong with the figure. It's just funny. Yeah. Well, when, uh, when, we, when we get to reveal that, I'll, I'll be bitching about that. Don't you worry. And then on that side, we've got just our, a quick charging station for all our batteries. Moving on to probably one of the more important pieces of our filming, we've got this table. You guys probably recognize this. It's just a sit-stand table where we can lower or raise. Just makes it easy because, you know, the, some of the figures are, are super tall. Some of them are much shorter. Just easier for me to be able to raise or lower the table to do filming of that to make sure the, they're in focus and, and, and the right height. The, it's just a regular sit stance table with a wood countertop piece that we bought and, and installed on top. Very simple, relatively inexpensive for, for a decent looking table. And yeah, pretty simple there. And this is actually quite an important piece of gear that so basically, this is a color checker. This thing, so you have the colors and the thing here. And then on the back, you also have a white balance and a focus checker. This thing, this little piece of plastic costs like 100 something, 200 bucks for this. Um, I ended up buying it because it turned out to be really useful to make sure yep. the color is accurate um, when, when I do the filming. Because, you know, I want to make sure that what you guys see on, on film is as close as possible to what I see in person, because sometimes that makes a huge difference, right? Skin tones, hair color, et cetera. That's really important. So partly the reason why I, you might be asking, why is he raising and lowering the table? Just raise and lower the tripod. The reason is because we, I typically use the, this massive ass thing to do the pretty shots, the beauty roll for the figures. This thing is, in, I'm not dicking around with that that tripod. This thing is super heavy. I'm not going to raise and lower this thing. So I'd rather low, raise and lower this table than this. So this thing is basically the Etochrome jib system. Um, it's actually three pieces. We've got, oh crap, where is it? This thing is the jib. Okay. Uh, we've got a pan pro down here, which allows it to go this way. And then we've got a head plus up here where you can do all the motions. I can't show you really what it does because Shuzi's got the camera on. <laughs> but basically, this is what the jib can do. I have to hold it because there's no weight here to counterbalance it. But it can do all that, all those motions, and it's all controlled via app so it can be very smooth and get that really cinematic feel when I do the B-roll for the figures. Probably the most important piece of equipment that we need for the room is obviously lighting. This big ass thing here is a Godox VL150. Um, oh, yeah, VL150. It's a very affordable, uh, good quality light for it's. Well, it's not cheap, but it's affordable for what you get. Uh, good deal for what you get. And we've got an Aperture Light Dome 2 light modifier on here. This massive thing. So what this thing does is creates that really soft lighting. You can see kind of up front, um, right here. I've got a figure here just to kind of show you. We've got Kirara here. You can see how soft that lighting is on her. It's just the, the, the shadow roll off is really pretty instead of just having a harsh lighting. So this thing we really love, especially on human skin tones as well. Um, Let me pan your face, okay. your sweaty face. You can see that it, Not too bad, it's quite actually. nice. The, the lighting, the shadow drop off is really nice. Nice big soft box. I mean, it's a little bit overkill to be honest, but you'll notice that I'm like this, probably isn't enough lighting for that. Well, the reason is because we have another light that we use and it's over here. Oh, actually this side of the room is actually Susie's art studio. So 
The light is on this side because she was filming something, so we left it here and keep my side a little bit cleaner. Uh, you can see some of our art over there. So all the garbage got moved to my side. Oh, so it's my that's fault. How, that's how, how you do that. Oh, you the light is garbage? No, no, no. no, 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 no. no, no. So this light is a, also a Godox. You can probably see it here, but it might be a bit too far. It's a Godox VL200. So it's a little bit more powerful than the other one we have. Not a huge amount, but this, the light modifier is an aperture lantern light modifier. So you can see the difference with this one. It just gets light everywhere. Um, soft light, basically kind of like a, a sun in the middle of our room. I really like this modifier. And before we got the other one, I, I was using this one only with some smaller lights to kind of get the lighting on the figure. So I think this thing was, was really good. And we do this weird, this thing here just to get because I'm usually using this for figures as well, right? So we want to get the light right on top of the figure. So that's why we have this weird contraption here um, on this really heavy, heavy ass duty um, C stand on there. This is currently at 60% and is already this bright. So this can go even brighter. <laughs> In case you guys are wondering why we have little balloons here, Susie, would you like to tell them why there are balloons? Inflated. That was your prop. Yeah, and right? who put them here? <laughs> well, because somebody keep hitting their head. So, you know, the, these are like the elevator. You know, in, in the mall, you have elevator and then escalator. And then you have those hanging plastic. There's no balloon. There's a hanging plastic piece of clear plastic to warn you if you crush your head. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. No, like... Anyways, <laughs> she is right in the sense that when, when this thing's a little bit low, I have hit my head on this metal thing and it hurts. But uh, I don't know how much this thing helps with the balloons. Um, but yes, it's Shuzi's uh, idea. Invention. Idea. Ingenious invention. Sure, sure. For <laughs> protecting our heads, apparently. Your head. Okay, and that's it for the room tour. Hope you guys liked it. And again, if you guys want... Want me, to re want me to review some of the figures that you saw that we haven't unboxed or reviewed yet? Let us know in the comments. Um, Shuzi's uh, art channel, uh, Shuzi Art, I'm also going to put a link down there if you guys are interested. And thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.